So good morning. Yeah, today I'm going to talk about exosome uh, from control side. So I'm going to present several papers regarding this project. So the uh, first project is from the Godana in Columbia University, maybe yeah, one of my friends. So she yeah, used this kind of concept. So conceptually, we can inject stem cell or exosome from stem cell or when they are differentiated cardiomyocyte, they can inject in the heart, and they also they can use exosome from cardiomyocyte. So they find out this maybe this exosome from cardiomyocyte is best among these four other candidates because there are some drawback or some merit, but this is more good. So that is why they choose this can be utilized for uh, infected heart regeneration. So the way how to uh, collect the exosome from the cardiomyocyte, they use IPC, and then they convert, they differentiate the cardiomyocyte for um, almost two weeks, and then watch PBS, switch to fresh serum-free culture media, and then collect it after two days later, and then they get their exosome from this condition media. So this is some IPC drive exosome. Yeah, they call EV, and then this uh, cardiomyocyte EV, similar particle size, number, and mean size, and then other markers also similar. So TSG101 is an exosome marker, and then GM130 and LF5 is some Golgi marker. They can be undetected in the cell. So these two markers can be detected in the cell, and then TSG 101 is detected in this EV. And then they find out uh, EV from cardiomyce and then just cardiomyce, they have different RNA library. And then they inject in IV. So this is a PBS after um, cardiac infarction and then they inject IPSC EV and ICM EV. As you can see, this is normal. So when they only they inject uh, ICM EV, this rhythm is retrieved. But this uh, infected group, they never retrieve from the IPSC EV. Yeah. So this can be converted to this one. And then this is some quantification of our images. They find out the ICM EV is working. And then they, they know one why, how this ICM EV is better than IPS EV. Uh, from the uh, microRNA seq they find out this uh, positive regulation of cardio muscle hypertrophy is unregulated in ICM EV, then IPS EV. And that is very interesting description. Surprisingly, 53% of top 20 significant enriched biological processes are known to be heavily involved in cardiobiology. Yeah, this great thing is regarding the cardiobiology. Furthermore, the top two biological processes are uh, positive regulation of muscle hypertrophy. So as microRNA typically represses the target function, this finding suggests that a main effect of ICMEV may be the repression of the cardio hypertrophy. So even though they find out this muscle hypertrophy is, is highly unregulated in this RNA sequence data, but the function of the microRNA is depressed, depressing the target function. So depression of the cardio hypertrophy is the main target. Yeah. I don't know, how, this is the normal way how the people describe about the microRNA data. Is it true? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna ask you later. And then, yeah, they find, and then they want to implant this IV, not the, uh, an EV, not the IV, just they want to implant in certain uh, cardiac muscle patch. So they uh, measure the release of EV in certain gel. Actually, they use this uh, gel form from Pfizer. So when they incorporate this their EV in gel form, and then over time, some are released, 
and then they are degraded, this gel. And then they have two EV, one is from IPS, the other one is ICM, and then they conjugate with this patch and then implant. Actually, uh, implant this patch to the heart, infected heart. So PBS control patch, ICM EV patch, IPS patch, no patch, and then shame operation, which means no ligation, which means no heart infection. And then they do the histology other work. So as a representatively sham infected PBS IPS EV ICM EV, they find out this is better than others. Okay, and so this is some end of the story. So they find out uh, ICM EV is better than IPS EV. Uh, in this uh, application for cardiology. Yeah, cardiology. Uh, but they use uh, non conducting Hydrogen. Yeah, yeah, no, conducting hydrogen. So, but suppose we can use uh, conducting hydrogen, maybe mm -hmm. more better for it. Because uh, material logic, as these people are using uh, conducting hydrogen. Right, right. I agree. Yeah. So, they just want to focus on some EV from the ICM. So, maybe. Because, uh, suppose in this hydrogen, they, they, they bind uh, this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Because the maximum, maximum people are using uh, gold, gold, mm. uh, gold part. One group uh, has a lot of applications mm -hmm. about uh, this cardiology. Mm -hmm. uh, they always use uh, gold, uh, means the uh, binded part is uh, inside and outside. And they yeah, right. Yeah. 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 We can yeah, upgrade this patch using conductive things. Yes. So I want to highlight this point again. So why they want to use this cardiomyocyte EV? So when you use IPC or stem cell, uh, clinical outcome or ejection fraction can be increased, but some tumorogenicity occur, poor cell retention, and modest effect. Yeah. And in case of the EV from stem cell, uh, poor EV retention and lack of cardio, cardiac specificity. But when they use this uh, EV from cardiomyocyte, they assume that maybe EV retention will increase and then cardiac specificity and ejection fraction also increase. Yeah. Actually, they exactly cannot prove how this ICM EV is barely, barely tended in the uh, heart tissue, but they just assume <coughs> like this. So I think this is uh, one of the very uh, beginning uh, initial study about the uh, EV for tissue regeneration part. And then it is very interesting, interesting paper from AFM. How can I call him? Yafeng Zhang. Yeah, I think yeah, I know he he is uh, one of the yeah, frontier guy about this this point. So they find out uh, this is recently published 2012. So autologous versatile vesicles incorporate biomimetic EV extra matrix induced biomineralization. So uh, this is um, how they collect the EV. So EV will isolate from different centrifuges and blah blah. So which means that exosome amount, how much they inject the exosome, and how to collect the exosome, they did not mention detail. I tried to find another uh, reference in this paper, and then another reference from the paper they never mentioned. They secretly cover these things. So they hypothesis that they want to use early EV during the uh, deep, uh, osteogenic differentiation, and then late EV from the late differentiation, maybe at day five, at day eleven, and then they find out early EV they have a lot of ALP. But in case of late EV, they have a lot of some calcium phosphate things. So uh, depending on when you collect the EV from different stage, they have different low. Uh, this is their, how they describe it. So, so bottom line, when they combine this early EV and late EV together, they can give a uh, best result. This is how they describe like this. So this uh, late EV, they can easily deposit in the collagen one precursor. 
this is some uh, early matrix for bone formation. So they want to utilize this early EV and the late EV together. So yeah, over time, for 14 days of the differentiation, osteogen differentiation from the MSC, they use BioTM and check. As you can see, at 11D, you can see this kind of line, which means that some are precipitated. Yeah, some are detected. But this only until 9 day, no link. You can see this link, two link. So they found these two link in latest of calcium and phosphate peak in here. So, so they first, and then they find out, oh, 11 day and 14 day, they have this link, which means there are some EV, uh, some, not EV, this is their cell, cell have some kind of precipitation. And then they find out from uh, BMSC and EV, uh, five day is maximum for having ALP activity. This is ALP activity. And then they visualize EV here. And then they confirm the marker and the size similar. But when they also check the early and late EV, late EV only have this kind of link. Yeah, so, so they, and they buy, and buy the set pattern and the EDX, they find out late EV have more calcium and phosphate composition. Because of this, they have this kind of link. And then from this point, they find out five day of EV, they call early EV, and then maybe 11D EV is they call late EV. And then they labeling uh, these two EV using uh, PKH26, and then they mix the cell together after dying the DOI, that they find out uh, early EV, they can easily uptake in the cell, but late EV, they cannot uptake easily. Yeah, maybe very small portion, they uptake it. Yes. And then they, when they check the uh, mito tracker, they find out their early EV, they can co-localize in the mitochondria. Because uh, this EV, they have a lot of ALP, so ALP, they can function in mitochondria easily, so they hypothesize like that. And then when they use a uh, late EV, this late EV, they co-localize in collagen 1, add 1, which means that this late EV, they cannot deposit inside of the cell, but they can deposit outside of the extracellular matrix called collagen A1. And then, uh, so they find out when they, uh, co-culture early EV, maybe for seven days, uh, compared to control, early EV, they can show little increase of ALP activity, but uh, late EV, not very much. Because they treat EV initially from the first differentiation stage. So this is their quantification. And then, they interestingly, they check uh, from the initial point at day zero, they incubate the early EV. You can see more ARS stain, but when they uh, co-culture the late EV at seven days, and then for seven days of differentiation more, the late EV also is working. So depending on the time point when you uh, co-culture this EV, from initially early EV working, in the middle stage, late EV is working. So this is their quantification. So I think this is a very interesting point. And then next step, they want to implant this EV using this, uh, some gel from the blood. So they use a special gel from the blood. They call it autologous certain gel. And then when they collect EV, and then they uh, simply mixing this uh, EV and this gel together, like this. So uh, firstly, and then this AH called auto autocoagulation gel, and then autocoagulation gel plus early EV and late EV. And they, they confirm this, uh, this is some degradation, degradation of the gel, and then they, from their, this gel, they can confirm the ALP activity and calcium uh, from the, each step. So, and then this is some, gel, and then early, late EV, and this is the combination of both of them. They check uh, this 
cell viability is similar of the bone marrow stem cell, and the LP activity also did increase in early EV, but not late EV, and when they combine them together, it will increase. And then this is some same as before, because they implant this uh, early EV and late EV together, so late EV, they cannot act properly from the initial stage. So that is why late EV is always low, but early EV and the combination, they are good. But in here, when they implant this uh, late EV at day seven, <coughs> it's, it's also, work, also working. And then they utilize more, so they combine this late EV and early EV together. So late EV first, they mix, made mixture with hydrogel, and then they on the uh, late EV embedded gel, they put early EV on the outer surface. And then they, this is called BCM. Check the degradation, and then as you can see from the outer and inner, outer part they have more, outer part they have early EV, so less P and calcium, but inner part they have late EV, they have more P and calcium. So inner part and outer part, they confirm they successfully load EV. Yeah. And then also they checked the ALP is as they design, only ALP activity increase and the calcium they release later. Uh, this is also their confirmation of ALP and calcium. And the next step is they implant this one. First, they check them um, in vitro, how they incorporate the cell viability, same, uh, more migration occur in this, this is their combination. And then this is some combination, but they mix them together at the same time. And this is some sequential uh, release of the EV, but this is some uh, same time they mix them together. So uh, migration is similar about this point, but Actually, they try to see some difference among this uh, just only combination or sequencer delivery. But as I said, as I saw, very little change. As you can see, similar, similar, similar. I think this is their drawback. Yeah, this is not they wanted to show, but almost similar uh, bone generation capacity, but in only gene expression, they uh, finally they can get some little increase of this uh, sequencer delivery of EV. And then next step, they implant this uh, gel with EV in the femur hole. So they found out yeah, this, their uh, exosome and the collagen A1, they are co-localized in here. And then 5D, 11D, they check this is some, um, they say they uh, calcium and phosphate and then collagen, collagenous fiber structure they can observe in this gel after implantation. And then this, when they implant in in vivo, they check their uh, sequence delivery of EV is better than only combination. And then better than only gel. Yeah, they found out from this histology. So I think this is some kind of first paper to utilize the different EV from the different stage for tissue generation. So I think we can get some main idea from this one. So let's say if we want to uh, gather some exosome from initial stage of cell or differentiation stage of cell, we can uh, get some different EV from the different stage. And then we can mix them together improperly, we can get good results. Uh, and then now I want to jump up more about some uh, chondrocyte exosome. So how we utilize exosome for chondrocyte genesis. So this is their paper in Biomaterial 2019. So they utilize MSC exosome uh, to regenerate TMJ osteoarthritis by attenuating inflammation and restoring matrix homeostasis. This is the same, uh, same as we develop our TMJ model, but they use MII. Yeah, Dr. Ajendra, you like it, MII. And then we are using CFA, but after induction of two weeks, and then they inject some PBS and exosome from the MSC. And each time point, they sacrifice an analysis. So how they, uh, how they yeah, collect the exosome? 
uh, this cell wash it chemical defined medium this term normal medium like that and then supplementary with this eye test medium and other things and then lean three times and then the fresh defined medium was added this is some MSC, MSC, MSC special MSC. Mm. I don't know why they choose this one. Yeah, this is the new type of this. Yeah, yeah. They just mentioned they use this MSC. And then uh, in this paper, they didn't use uh, uh, exogen-free FBS. But uh, actually, in this media, they don't have any FBS. This is some um, uh, ITS and some gross factor they are taken. So they use this special media for collecting the con condition media. So after fresh defined media with edit. Yeah, yeah, but they use some growth factors. Yeah, right, right. Like, so when we collect the results, so these growth factors are also Yeah, that's what I want to say. Like, yeah, that's what I want to say. Yeah. So after three days later, the media was collected and then filtered, and then other things are the same as the ultra centrifuge for getting exogen. So like Dr. Alindra mentioned, they didn't use you should use a uh, growth factor free medium. So maybe there is many hypo many possibilities, some growth factor that can be obtained in exogen. So but anyhow, yeah, yeah, this is how they describe yeah, exogen, yeah, this same question media, and then when I check this one, this is some their uh reference twenty two twenty sorry, twenty three. They didn't mention any detail. And then two weeks later, they uh, inject uh, in this local injection 100 microgram exogen in 50 microliter PBS. This, I think, is quite large amount because uh, according to the other literature, they uh, use. Nanoparticle uh, 200 uh, microgram. 200. Yeah, 200. Yeah, 200. Yeah, but normally when I check some exosome amount, this is quite large amount. But nanoparticle also we can inject 200 micrograms, something like. Dr. Handema, how, how much of nanoparticle we inject in TMG at the moment? Yeah, I'm so this is a micrograms per ml. So when you consider the volume, the absolute amount of the so how much volume did you inject? Mm -hmm. So 1,000 micrograms per ml, 30 microliter to is 30 microgram, right? So this is some quite large amount. In TMJ, it's quite large amount. Maybe yeah, because, you know, TMJ, TMJ, in for example, after that, the party lunch, they have, they make the Yeah, right. This right, right, they can release wash out. Right. Mm. So they check some RNA seq from this uh, P base group and exogen group. That they find out uh, some anti inflammatory, little bit chondrogenesis, uh, matrix regulation. They try to say this is better than PBS, but uh, pain is absolutely lower. Anti apoptosis? I'm not sure. But <laughs> they show like this, yeah. And then this is very interesting thing. They using this count some kind of how can I say some some filament. They they measure their uh, pain threshold. So how they do it? They uh, pinch this filament in TMJ area, and then when the rat uh, shake their head which means they feel some pain. So actually, I usually yeah, order this one for our future project. So you can utilize this one for knee, joint, or TMJ. And this is a very good behavior test. So in PBS, even though they inject, they pinch very lower force, they, the red shake their head. For an exosome and shame, they, uh, they have to use more force. And then this is very good, very beautiful histology of HNE, triple blue, 
RPASMAT, and PP, MMP3, 13. And then from the, uh, let's say, two weeks, four weeks, SHAM, OA, Exome, PBS, and then eight weeks, and Naive as well. And then they score everything. And then they, from this uh, kind of parameter, they categorize anterior part, central part, posterior part, and they even analyzed this uh, Kondai height as well as cartilage thickness. They very accurately evaluate how they improve their cartilage generation. So cartilage height, cartilage thickness in the anterior, central, and posterior. And this marking score, I already, maybe I'm is already doing this marking scoring. So from the all parameters, they said this uh, exosome OA is better than others for all parameter. Yes, and uh, as well as this alpha smed and MMP13 cell, also they are decreased in this uh, exosome groups. Yeah, but not much to the shame group. So from the, this micro CT data, so they check OA exosome, they maintain. But PBS group, they are a little bit go down. And that is their quantification. And then this very uh, interesting in vitro study, yeah, they stimulate the one beta. Uh, actually, they, uh, yeah, they utilize chondrocyte and stimulate with one beta and treat exosome and harvest this time point and then collect media, cell, and then another culture media and to check MP13 level. They find out this uh, gag formation is increased only in, depending on the considered exosome, one to five milligram per exosome, they find out five milligram per exosome is better than others. So gag formation should be, uh, should be increased in this uh, chondrogenesis. At NO level, it's called an ROS, they can go down. MP13 level is go down in biomicrogram by exosome. And then, yes, in the in vitro condition, they use this kind of amount of microgram per ML exosome, and then with one beta and this kind of differentiation media. They check. So, if we want to collect exosome from chondrocyte, maybe we can use this kind of similar things. It is there another way, uh, stimulate and then pre-treatment with inhibitor uh, to say this is a one beta mediated mechanism and then treat the exosome and harvest, harvest again. And this uh, theophyllarin, uh, actually I forgot what is the meaning of this inhibitor. So when they treat this inhibitor, they can go down. So the exosome, they can increase the PAKT and ERK and other AMPK pathway, but signaling protein, but this is go down. So they come from this, from this mechanism, the exosome, they are acting. So all of this, their quantification on even the gag formation and NO, and then also this, ah, I found, yeah, because they block the exosome uptake into the cell. So this is some inhibitor of certain uh, uptake of exosome. Yeah, it's a prior to remember. Ah, sorry, yeah, this is not the uh, inhibitor of exosome. This is inhibitor of ERK pathway, inhibitor of AKT pathway, inhibitor of certain combination pathway. Say, in the last page, they find out uh, the TMJ OA for the repair, they're using MS exosome, so have this kind of good point, and then they, rel they relieve this pain and fibrosis, and then they find out the mechanism. Uh, this adenosine receptor, our exosome, they can uh, easily co combine this adenosine receptor, maybe from this inhibitor, thiophylin, and then they find out AKT pathway, ERK pathway, and PK pathway, they activate some matrix homeostasis. So, yeah, this is very... Chondrocyte. Chondrocyte. They use. They, they mentioned this 
예, 아데노신 예, 엑소좀 앤 아데노신 리셉터 바이닝 이즈 웰론 인 디스 페이퍼 I'm not sure this can be applied in all kind of exosome, but in MS exosome, they mention like that. microRNA. Oh, uh, this is. I'm not sure this is from the RNA seq or just microRNA seq. But yeah, actually, the first paper they mentioned microRNA, but second paper about uh, M, uh, osteogenesis, actually they tried to say about the microRNA, but they didn't label specifically. So that's why I didn't put, but they have many figures about the microRNA as well. Mm. well. About this paper, uh, do you see this is some microRNA seq or RNA seq, right? Yeah, they didn't focus on the microRNA. But many people about the exosome, they always focus on microRNA. Yeah, protein. Right, right. Actually, yeah, the first step is look at the microRNA, but they didn't find specifically the target. That's why they shift to the protein and other calcium or phosphate. Yeah, I agree with your point. And then the second question is that, do you know how they, how they, did they measure the concentration of the exosome? Ah, actually, we have that kit, some exosome quantification kit we have. Yeah, so, or they can use some normal DCA protein assay. Yeah, they didn't measure exactly the weight, mm -hmm. but as an indirect way from the protein quantification, mm -hmm. they measure the, the amount of exogen. So, yeah, can I go further? Maybe I have two or three paper, but they have some low impact. Okay. In this paper, they find the uh, uh, non-degraded cartilage, normal cartilage and degraded cartilage, and then they collect the EV and then check their uh, EV quantification. They find out uh, this degraded EV, they have more particle in lower size. And they found this, they have more exosome. And then they primary control site, and then they get a superintendent and also they checked the EV from the, their control site and they checked uh, ultra filtration, ultra simplification two different ways and they've also find the exosome they detected. And then, so this exosome marker. So this paper, they find out uh, exosome are heavily detected in the OA model. So how they link this exosome in vitro and in vivo. So they find out uh, EV from OA control site enhance mature one beta production of macrophage and synovitis is increased. But in this paper, they, they didn't mention detail about the exogen amount, but they mentioned uh, OA donor site, how they collect exogen in serum free cell culture media. So I want to say in different paper, they have different condition. Exogen free FBS serum free cycle media or just normal gross spectrum media. Yeah. Also this primary control site in cell free cycle media. So they have P uh, DW group at one beta, primary control site after culturing, remove condition media and wash FS free media after one, one and a half day later, they collect exosome. Check their uh, exosome amount, similar, and then they use, this, they collect this exosome and then treat PMA-induced THP1 cell. PMA is a booster of the immune cell, and then THP1 is human monocyte cell line. And they find out uh, under only 
normal condition PBS, never this exosome from the one beta, they can activate. But only LPS, no change, no change, no change, no change. But finally, they, they find the TNF alpha, no change, one beta only change. At which day? Uh, 12 hour and 18 hour. Actually, they very frustrated. They didn't see any different among this. But in this one beta, they only change among this uh, exosome from the one beta activated cell. They can increase more about the so PBS group under LPS condition. Yeah, so this very tricky in vitro study. And then they found soup and lysate. LPS, on the LPS condition, this 1 beta exosome, they have more 1 beta and then pro 1 beta as well. So this is their ELISA, they find out under LPS, a 1 beta activate exosome, they have more exolate. And then they check enhanced inflammasome in this uh, 1 beta stimulated exosome from the control site to macrophage. So they found exosome like vesicle from 1 beta to which is the control site increased production of the mature 1 beta. And then, okay. So they want to link how the uh, 1 beta uh, exosome from the control site can communicate with uh, their uh, immune cell near the osteoarthritis through the 1 beta analysis, a 1 beta pathway. And then this is a very low impact factor, but this is a very good uh, meaning for us. So uh, they use uh, bone marrow stem cell exosome and then control cell exosome and inject in IV. So which one is better for control cell regeneration? Okay, so CPC is cartilage progenitor cell okay, from the bovine. So how they collect uh, reaching 80% conformity, control site and bone marrow stem cell linked with PPS and culture with serum free medium for two days. And then using the normal way of cut, uh, using ultra centrifuge. And then they inject in vivo in IV 30 microgram at once. And in vitro, they use 30 microgram per ml. Okay, in here, this uh, per ml of injection, work weekly base or uh, per week, and then yeah. So let's see the result. This is very interesting. So they confirm their exosome after dying, exosome from bone marrow and chondral site, they are similarly merging, and then TG beta level and SMAD. Collagen 2 and SAX9, not much of change. But SAX9 and Collagen 2 little increase the control site. But other things, three things is similar. Uh, because, because, uh, in the uh, cell, collagen level is higher than others. Hmm? This is in, in higher collagen because collagen, because the uh, control site cells have collagen in there. Right. This is the reason. Because one level cell have less. Yeah, 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 right, right, right. You're right. Uh, and then, okay, and then they treat this exosome to a uh, chondrocyte, okay, chondrocyte progen the cell. So they find out the proliferation rate between this BMSC and, exo and chondrocyte exosome, not much change, but they find so, and the, above the proliferation, this bone marrow exosome, they have more proliferation than chondrocyte okay, compared to NC. And then both collagen to SAX9, they are increasing chondrocyte, but other VGF, SDF, phone alpha, regarding uh, recruiting the cell and then some angiogenesis is better in BMSC, confirmed by Western VGF, SDF, better in bone marrow stem cell. And then from the migration, Bone marrow stem cell exosome have more migration 
supramolar vibration than the chondral cell. Chondral cell never did. And about the angiogenesis, bone marrow stem cell is better than chondral cell exosome. Confirmed by these things. This positive control always better than uh, NC and CC than the bone marrow stem cell exosome. So we can say that chondral cell exosome they can increase chondrogenic, but no ST free jab angiogenesis is from the chondral cell exosome. But rarely proliferation really increase at seven days, not five and seven days. And migration also they are rarely detected. And then lastly, uh, they found the number of the migration. So migration also uh, really increased 12 hours in chondrogenic, but BMS is better than others. Okay. So migration number and migration rate is also increased in BMS exosome treated one. And then in terms of this, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, DNA is the same one. Cell migration is really increased in chondrogenic, but bone marrow stem cell exome is better than others. And then about the anti-apoptotic level, mm, similar. Yeah. And then they inject this exosome to the IV. Actually, this uh, not IV, just local delivery in certain area. And they, they find out uh, chondogenic exosome has a little effect than bone marrow stem cell exosome. The form just his on histology compared to PBS control group, two is better than others, but this is better than this bone marrow stem exosome. So they show like this. Okay. Yeah, so we Okay, yeah, briefly, yeah, I will, within 10 minutes, I will finish. So this, they use exosome-mediated bidirection signaling between MST and the chondrocyte for enhanced chondrogenesis. So how they uh, use the exosome? They use exosome deplete FBS. And then, uh, after three days of culture under exosome FBS condition, function media will collect for ultra centrifuge. And then they especially they found they did this alcyon blue staining for confirming the effect of the chondrogenic exosome for chondrogenesis. So this is their manner in gross media and exome free media, low concentration FPS and chondrogenic media, they treat exosome or not. This is used as a passive control group. So they want to check exosome effect from the this human MSC for chondrogenesis. And this is very interesting. They, they treat human MS exosome to uh, bone cartilage cell. And then sometimes uh, bone uh, bovine chondrosa exosome to human MSC. Uh, they use two different ways. So this human MS exosome to bovine chondrocyte they increase uh, under this exosome treated one. Collagen 2 is increased, but not collagen 1. And collagen 2 ratio is increased, and agarican and saxonite is increased. And day 7, same, yeah, increase with exosome group. But when they also bone bind control cell exosome to human MSC, yeah, collagen 1, not much of change. But collagen 2 is super increase in extreme groups. And then 2 and 1 ratio is increased. Agarican and Saxonite are also increased. And day 7 also similarly. So they want to say some communication between MSC and then chondrocyte. 
And then from this bovine chondrocyte exosome to human MSC, human MSC exosome to chondrocyte, and they find out exosome treated uh, human, uh, human exosome treated bovine chondrocyte have more Alcyon blue staining, which means that they have more chondrogenic. And then in this way also, exosome they have more, a little more uh, chondrogenic genesis. Maybe you, we can use this methodology for confirming our efficacy. Yeah, this is some subsidiary things. So anyhow, I suggest uh, if we gather some exosome from chondrocyte, maybe we have to optimize MSC oxygen is better, or chondrocyte exosome is better, or we can combine them together for chondrogenic degeneration. So after the conferency washing and culturing 10% exosome free FBS or error replacement two or three days culture and exome gathering, either exocade or ultracentrally fused, and then quantification, exo ELISA, bright foot, and then using NTA to confirm the number and in vitro about this uh, amount for rectondrocyte differentiation. So we can check GAG or Alessian blue staining on the gross media or differentiated media. And we can also check survival, this one, on the HO2 or with the HO2. In the Western blood marker of positive exo intercellular protein, yeah, they should be minus. And then we can also check TM. So this is uh, my suggestion about how we confirm the exosome chondrocyte for chondrogenesis. This uh, gross media checking their uh, normal biocompatibility and the under age of condition, we can check their cell salvage effect and the Aishan blue staining under GM or different media, we can check their uh, chondrogenic effect and also check their PCR and other things. And then we can show like this.